And so welcome everyone today on um, this. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about our Club Managers Association of America, one of the most prestigious clubs that we have on campus today. And it's for our um, College of Hospitality and Tourism Management students. So here's just a picture of one of our chapters in the previous years. Um, and they've actually done really great things, not only in country clubs and professionally, but in the community as well. All right. So I just want to go over quickly what the mission is for um, CMAA, but the most important part is the education, professional development, networking, and placement. So our College of Hospitality gives you a lot of these things already, but CMAA takes it to the next level and gets you right working in the field right away. Whether you want to work in a country club or not, it's really good professional development for any student interested in working in hospitality. It gives you the option to network with other professionals in the industry, as well as helps it makes it easier to find a job once you graduate. So you can find a lot more information on our website about CMAA, but I think it would be a little bit better tonight to maybe hear from the actual students and alumni that have been through the club, been through the program, and now work professionally um, in, in various clubs across the country. Um, but first, some quick facts about our CMAA program. So we have been ranked number one in the country for the last 11 straight years. And most of the, our, all of the alumni on the call have been a part of this um, process. And they have really gained a lot of really great experience from this. So this membership and this club also guarantees an internship at a private club every summer. You don't have to necessarily do a private club, but it's an option to get experience, whether it's restaurant management, whether you wanna work more on the front desk people facing in the back end, whatever you prefer. We have lots of connections already. And if there's a place that you wanna work, I'm sure we know somebody there to help you get there. Um, the next most important thing is the alumni networking. So these three alumni that you're meeting on the call today, they are some of the greatest resources you could have um, even before becoming a student. Asking them what they did and how CMA that was important to them. And they can help you develop professionally. They're happy to answer questions, anything you have along the way. And some of the other um, fun benefits of being in the club is every year they, now during COVID, so hopefully by the time next year, this will be um, back into the normal swing of things, but they normally attend world conferences. They've been to places like Chicago, San Francisco, Orlando, um, and they also tour country clubs across the country, even Canada. Um, there's a lot of local clubs, ones in Rochester, Buffalo, but they do go out of state um, as much as they can. And then our placement rate um, at country clubs upon graduation for the past 10 years has been 100%, which is even better than our College of Hospitality placement rate. So by being a part of this club, you're pretty much guaranteed a job once you graduate. And that's really important for students who are looking for a job in hospitality, especially during this time. But um, our graduates from the college that have also done CMA, some of the most valuable students and employees at um, their country clubs today. So I'm first gonna hand it over to our current student, Trevor Howell, um, he's going to talk a little bit about his experience starting in CMAA and um, where he is right now. Go ahead, Trevor. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Trevor. I'm a sophomore here at Niagara University. I'm a sport management and luxury hospitality operations double major. Um, so a little bit of my perspective, I guess, on Club Management Association of America. I actually joined second semester of my freshman year, so I didn't get right off the bat, which I highly recommend doing because there's a lot of cool stuff you can get on early. Um, but I just kind of want to talk a little bit about how this has gotten to me where I am, uh, how this has offered some great opportunities. So I came in to Club Management Association of America, not really thinking I wanted to go in the country club business. It was just, I knew it was a great opportunity. I had some friends who were part of the club itself and they have said so many great words about it. Uh, so my biggest thing I think is first, even if you're not thinking country club is where I wanna be, I still really do push this club purely because of this leadership you will get out of this, The proper just the form and everything you do will become so much more mature you get a better sense of establishment you know what you're doing it's a phenomenal club just really build your leadership skills uh but it's taken me a long way from where i started uh i got an internship my first year doing it you're pretty much guaranteed a paid internship every summer you're doing this we have so many networking connections so many different people we know you want an internship it's literally just as simple as asking and reaching out. Our establishment has built, they have such a name in the country club business and it's a small world. I mean, you will ask country club general managers that I've worked with and they just, you knew everybody. That's a very, it's a large all over the place, but everyone knows everybody kind of thing. So we really have a name. We can get you out. We can get you placed in these internships. It will be phenomenal opportunities for you. Uh, I did my internship at Trans Valley Country Club. 
Uh, I got, I, you know, I wore so many different hats. I worked in the lower level positions of everywhere. I got to manage some smaller events. I got to run smaller things. I got to run the halfway house. I got to run a dining event for a few nights. I got to actually help run and uh, plan a wedding. I got to plan a lot of our smaller events with COVID. We really couldn't get me in anything much bigger. I got to work on a golf tournament, all that kind of stuff. I really learned a lot of fundamental things from that. Uh, didn't think I'd be in the country club business when I started. Now I'm very much enjoying the country club business and could very well see myself working there in the future. Um, I was offered a job to continue working there after my internship, which was an awesome, uh, continuing to work there as a server, uh, working, doing some smaller events and stuff like that, helping them planning some smaller things. Um, but the biggest thing I can really say is as a student coming in, uh, I was iffy. I knew it'd be a big commitment. I knew there'd be a lot to take on, but I mean, working with everyone there, they really flex on your schedule. They work with you. They make things work. It's, it is work. It's not just, oh, come and join this easy club. We're number one for 11 years in a row for a reason. Uh, but it's, it is the best experience you'll ever have. You will, you will succeed. You will get, you will feel success. You will get to this next level of whatever you're looking into doing. Anyone in the college of hospitality, I push this. I don't care if you don't want to go in the country club business. I don't care what area you're looking into, but the experience and the things you will learn from this club can work in any career you go into. So it's, you form such a strong leadership, such a strong sense of confidence in what you're doing. Uh, I, I can't begin to say how appreciative I am of being a part of this club, uh, how appreciative I am of getting the opportunities that it's given me. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to my next two, well, pretty much almost three years working with them, uh, but it is phenomenal. These alumni will all probably say the same thing. They've had such great experiences here themselves and they've all done very, very well for themselves from coming through here. So. Whether you are thinking country club, whether you're not thinking country club, I really think this is a great place to start. I think it gets you to the next level. And who knows, you might find something new you love with country clubs. But I could go on and on forever. Uh, Aaron knows this, that I'm a, I'm a big talker. Uh, but I will hand it over to, I believe, Brandon to talk a little bit more about the club itself. Awesome. So um, like Trevor kind of had, had mentioned is the success of, of NUCMA and, and the history and the legacy that it's really left in the, the club industry as a whole. It's a, a professional association at the student level, but also it's a, an association that continues um, once you, you during your postgraduate opportunities that you have in clubs. And it's not just country clubs, it's, it's yacht clubs, uh, city clubs. Um, there is a, a wide variety of, of what we call private clubs um, that have very different interests around the country and around the world. Um, so I kind of a little bit about me. I started also my second semester of my freshman year uh, at Niagara. Uh, I, I had joined um, uh, NUCMA. My first summer, I worked at the Country Club of Buffalo, uh, which is just down the street from my current uh, club at Park Club uh, here in Williamsville. Right out of graduation, I moved down to Chevy Chase, Maryland and worked at Columbia Country Club, uh, which is just outside the district line. Uh, we had about 1,500 member families, so that equated about to 5,200 uh, family members that could come to the club at any given point, uh, from congressmen, past presidents, um, some really high end and high profile clientele um, that are really just looking for their home away from home. Um, that's, that's really kind of the, the, kind of the tagline of a club, is that this, this is the second place in uh, someone's life where they spend the most amount of time outside of their home or their work or their office. Um, so really our job is to help them and make them feel welcome, like it is an extension of their real home uh, and really uh, working on establishing the fundamentals and, and a high level of service the whole, every time that they're here at the club. So um, that's a little bit about me and I like uh, Trevor had said, it's really, there's opportunities around the country and our, our alumni network um, from NUCMA is, is pretty extensive. Um, like Zach is down in Florida and you have Nick in Pennsylvania. We have friends downstate in, in Manhattan. Uh, we have alumni that are out in, in California working in downtown San Francisco. Um, really, we're, we're all over the place, um, and which is a great thing to have, uh, especially as a student of Niagara and the network, because I know, know for one uh, that we're willing to go the extra mile to make sure that we have a student from Niagara just because of the credibility that this program has. Um, and having been a student and uh, you know, a past advisor of the, the association, you really do see the amount of work that goes into the success of this program. Um, you know, as a student, yes, it would be, it was one end of the spectrum and helping develop that program to making it what it is in continuing what the success is uh, as an alumni. Um, 
really, you see both sides and you, now you having seen both sides, you understand why we are number one uh, in the country because of the amount of work and effort that goes into uh, the success of this program. Yeah, great, thank you, Brandon. All right, uh, next, if uh, Nick, you'd like to um, tell us a little bit more about yourself and your role at uh, Rolling Rock Club. Yeah, uh, hi everybody. I'm Nick Crawford, Rolling Rock Club down in Ligonier, Pennsylvania. We're about an hour east of Pittsburgh. Um, you know, I guess I kind of have it easy here because Brandon and Trevor just kind of summed it up really, really well there. Um, you know, CMA and, and its core is um, fundamentally uh, one of the best organizations in the in, in, in hospitality world. Um, hospitality can be a very broad topic, but um, club management kind of gets you into a focus. So uh, if nothing else that you draw from this today, uh, I would say, you know, finding a focus in your career is what's going to be really important. And um, like Trevor kind of mentioned, you can you can branch off into many different areas um, in the club world. It's, it's not necessarily golf uh, or tennis or swimming. Um, you know, overnight rooms, many clubs have. Uh, dining, <laughs> events, uh, finance, uh, budgeting, you know, a lot, of, a lot of different areas that you can really branch off in. Um, so from, from my perspective, my background, uh, I, I'm, I guess, I'm the old guy here. Um, I kind of started um, about 15 years ago at Niagara University in CMA. Um, a lot of great networking opportunities, uh, different conferences that you can go to, um, really, really educate yourself throughout college. Uh, and then the internship process, of course, um, probably key to, you know, getting yourself started, um, especially post-grad, uh, lining up with some of the great clubs in America, um, like we've been talking about, networking. We've got people all over the country. So, you know, if, if you want, if you want the, the four seasons, you've got the Northeast. If you want warm weather all, all the time, you've got California and Florida. Um, if you want mountainous, you can, you can go to Utah. Uh, so the, the options are really endless for you. Um, so my background, I started here at Rolling Rock Club, uh, you know, 14 years ago. I interned twice. In fact, I loved it so much. Um, I left after, I actually started here full time after my internships. And then um, I moved back to Buffalo, go Bills. Um, I moved back for Niagara Falls Country Club for a couple of years. Uh, I wanted to be a little closer to family. Transit Valley Country Club, Trevor, I was once there. Um, you know, say hi to everybody, please. Um, had a great opportunity there as the assistant manager, the club manager. Um, and then I had the opportunity to come back here to Rolling Rock Club, uh, which I, I kind of mentioned is very special to me. Um, it, it's a magical place and uh, it, it drew me in right away. So um, I, I've got a lot of great experiences. I feel that I, I'm a top tier club now. Um, I've been at kind of a mediocre club um, and I've worked my way up from top to bottom. So or bottom to top, excuse me. Um, and, and, and yeah, CMA has been uh, kind of my crutch the whole way. It's been my professional organization that's kept me on track. So um, obviously happy to be here today, a proud alumni of Niagara University and uh, looking forward to uh, you know, hopefully talking to some of you all. Thanks. Great, thanks, Nick. All right, um, and lastly, we'll get um, let Zach take it. Good evening, everyone. My name is Zach. I'm currently at the Country Club at Mirasol in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Um, my CMAA path, I started right in my freshman year. Um, I joined CMAA as soon as I got on campus. I had heard about it. And um, once I got there, started speaking with current students that were in the, the organization, I knew that that's what I wanted to, to be a part of. Um, after I did my first internship at the Chevy Chase Club in Maryland, I was absolutely hooked on clubs. I was like, this is what I want to do. This is what I want my career to be in. Um, I think I learned so much in that first internship within those four months that I was there that I don't think I would have gotten that experience if I had worked somewhere else part time or just kind of picked up jobs here and there. Um, the internships was definitely a big part for me. Um, branching out, doing different types of internships in different locations. The following year, I went to the New York Athletic Club um, for a restaurant supervisor position. So what's awesome about clubs is they offer interns um, pretty unique um, internship opportunities, whether you go there to be a restaurant manager or one of the events managers, or you run their poolside restaurant or their halfway houses, or I've even seen ones that you do their beverage cart operations and you work in the pro shop. 
Um, so there's a wide range of internship opportunities for students that are looking for any interest area within hospitality. It's not just strictly food and beverage focused, which I like. And then my last internship, I wanted to go out of the box and kind of go somewhere new. So I went to Scottsdale, Arizona to Desert Mountain Club. Um, and that was by far the best experience I've had in clubs. It's an amazing club, an amazing general manager. And it's fun to go to all of these different um, clubs because the connections you build, you're, you're able to kind of build your own network with, with people, obviously like Brandon, myself. Um, we've known each other for a while now, but even though we all went to NU, I didn't meet him until I actually interviewed with him um, for an internship position. So it's just crazy how things work, even with the, the NU alumni. Trevor, I also worked at Transit Valley. Um, I worked there part-time all through my senior year of college. So it's just crazy the steps that all of our alumni take that kind of connect us together, whether it be through our internships or how students get internships through other alumni that they may have not known before. Um, so that is the, to me, the most amazing part about NUCMAA um, is the networking with the alumni. But also it's just the education factor too. Um, not only do you learn so much in the CMA organization, but as a part of the student chapter, um, that really kind of helped me break out of my shell and grow, whether you take on um, leadership roles within the CMA organization, being one of the officers to help lead and, and guide the club through. Um, I served as the president and the vice president of CMAA at NU, um, and definitely being in those positions has helped me in my professional kind of world with time management and planning and so many different things that if I was not in this organization, I don't think I would be at the magnitude where I am now. That's all. Thanks, Zach. So yeah, I actually worked at a private club. I never told any of you that. I worked at um, the Adirondack Glee Club in Old Forge, New York one summer. So I was unfortunately not part of CMA. It's one thing I wish I had done, but I just didn't have time in my schedule. But if I could go back, that's the one thing I would do is join one of our hospitality clubs. Um, and it's something if you don't get started right away, there's never a bad time to join, but the earlier you do it, the better. All right. So I'm gonna go through, um, we have a couple of questions to ask our alumni panelists, but if um, any students have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, and then if you direct it to a certain person, they'll be able to answer it for you, or you can do a, just a general question or send it directly to me, it doesn't matter. But we'll get started with um, some questions and I'll start with um, Brandon, since you were the first one to go last time, you've had the longest break. Um, how did your experience in CMAA prepare you for your current role? So my time uh, during, in CMA really uh, was kind of expansive, starting from food and beverage onto golf course operations, um, you know, did the work uh, abroad program in Lake Como, so had some additional food and beverage experience there, um, but really having um, those fundamentals, kind of those building blocks when you work from the bottom up, as Nick put it, um, that really helps you with your career uh, post-graduation and helping in, at those entry level management jobs as the, at, during those positions. Uh, those are the positions that you're helping to work and train and develop a training program usually to uh, work and train line level staff. So uh, really the experience at CMA is, is really kind of the foundation and the building blocks that has helped me succeed and continue to my path of, for development and, and success in the industry um, really just helped me build that foundation and those building blocks at, you know, the Carolina Country Club down in Raleigh uh, and then even uh, post-graduation at Carol at Columbia, um, you still had some of that information and that experience uh, during my time at CMA. Awesome, thank you, Brandon. Uh, Zach, would you like to um, add your uh, opinion to that one too? Yeah, I would say definitely being in CMA, that's kind of where you get to learn like the basics, I would say. Like before my first internship, I had never served a table. I'd never worked in a restaurant. I had no clue what I was doing. Um, I had no experience at all, but I learned so much in that internship. I learned proper wine service. I learned proper service. I, Again, my club was right next to where Brandon was working, actually, um, right outside the D.C. area. So we were serving judges and um, different diplomats from, oh, my gosh, God knows where I've been patted down by the Secret Service before there. It was just a crazy experience that I was exposed to so much and got to learn so much that um, 
starting with the basics there, I think that's what kind of propelled the rest of my career was, I mean, just being a sponge and learning it all. I, I didn't know a single thing about restaurants when I went in there, but I just wanted to absorb it all and learn it all. So that way I could just keep learning and growing and learning and growing. Great. Thanks, Zach. And uh, Nick. So um, when I started CMA, you know, 13, 14, 15 years ago, um, our, our organization was still really fresh and we didn't, we didn't really, uh, we didn't really know everything that was out there uh, at that moment. But um, you know, Dr. Fry was, was our professor and our advisor at that time. And he gave us a lot of great resources to go out and find, you know, clubs and, you know, I like to think that I was part of that group that helped us expand this, this um, network that we keep talking about. Um, you know, I, uh, from, from a, um, an educational standpoint, um, CMA really taught me the professionalism. Niagara University does that on its own, you know, professional code of conduct, um, it, learning how to speak to people, socializing in that particular environment. Um, you know, clubs are rel mostly considered to be uh, superior to a public product. What you can, what you can get in, in the restaurant, uh, or, or the food and beverage aspect of a country club is meant to be superior to what you can find um, in, in your local community. And, and I think that's true. And I think that you can refine your skills um, through CMA, uh, again, the networking and learning different, different ways of um, service. Um, but, you know, attention to detail, um, uh, all, all those things that I think kind of prepared me for uh, where I am today. Um, it, it started, you know, a long time ago and, and, and like everybody's going to say, it's, it's hard work. It's, you got to put it in. And, um, but I, I think there's also a, a good balance in, in the club world. Um, I think it affords you the opportunity to have a life outside of work. Uh, I think there's a good balance with, um, your work life and, and social life. Um, so everything that I've done from, uh, the beginning to where I am now, um, it has prepared me for my, my, my current role. So um, it's, it's been a great experience uh, throughout and uh, I do have CMA to thank for it, so. Awesome, thanks, Nick. Sorry, I couldn't unmute myself for a second there. All right, so I'm gonna start with Zach for the next question to start us off. What was your favorite internship and uh, what skills did you learn from that experience? My favorite internship was definitely um, the Desert Mountain Club in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, it was a totally new um, connection for Niagara. No one had ever been there before for menu, so it was new for me. I didn't even see the club before. Hopped on a phone call and moved there a couple weeks later. Um, but just the the size of the club, they have six different clubhouses, so typically country clubs have one just clubhouse that's got the ballroom, the restaurants, they had seven of the six of those. They now have seven um, with seven golf courses. Um, but when I was there, I was a club management intern. So I worked in every um, different department with their management team, kind of learning the ins and outs of what they do. So I spent time with the agronomist. I spent time in the pro shop. I spent time with tennis, pickleball, um, the fitness coordinators, um, definitely heavily in food and beverage as well, but um, it was great to to have an internship that kind of let me dive into different departments as my first two were solely food and beverage focused. So it was nice to kind of get a well-rounded experience and see really the club side on a bigger scale other than just being in the food and beverage department. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. Uh, Nick, what was your, um, you don't have to necessarily do internship. You could do maybe your favorite job. Um, whatever you found that brought the most skills to where you are today. Yeah, thanks. That's actually great because um, my, my only internship was here at Rolling Rock Club. So, <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it's an awesome, awesome internship that we do. It's rotational. Happy to talk about that later, but um, I'll actually jump to where I was at Niagara Falls Country Club. Um, I, I made that move here from Rolling Rock Club where we have vast resources. We have an enormous membership uh, with a great outreach around the country and you know, you have everything at your fingertips that you really need to accomplish the job, whether it's uh, financial or it's, um, you know, um, tangible items that you need to, to do your job. Um, I had all of that here at Rolling Rock Club. And what I realized when I left here and I went to a different club that, um, 
you know, had, had restrictions with budgetary items and had restrictions from a capital standpoint, um, had a different um, uh, payroll system, a different uh, POS systems. So um, I, it was a great experience for me because I had to do more with less and it really forced me to um, learn a little bit on my own, um, go through some bumps and bruises and um, really, again, do, do less with, um, or do more with less. Um, and and I, I thought that was actually one of my best experiences through uh, my career so far. Um, I, had, I, had to, I had to really learn a little bit on my own. You know, it's not, you don't always have a mentor that can be with you, um, you know, by your side at all times, showing you the way, um, hand-holding, if you will. Um, so learning a little bit of that on your own and, and kind of finding out who you really are as a manager um, can be a really good experience for you. Um, that's definitely what I got was um, I got the ability to figure out how to deal with different situations. Uh, when you're in uncomfortable uh, places, uh, you have to figure out how to deal with them. And it's my opinion that you only know how to deal with uncomfortable situations if you're in uncomfortable situations. Um, so I, I had some of those at Niagara Falls Country Club. Uh, I, I got to go back this past um, last year, right before this pandemic hit. And wow, what, what, a, what a turnaround they've had there at that club with, um, with some of the improvements that they've made. Um, I like to believe somehow, some way I had a little hand in how that, that path came to be. Uh, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But um, uh, either way, I, I really had a, a, that was my best experience as a, a manager to date. Awesome, thanks, Nick. I will hand it off to Brandon. All right, so I think my favorite internship was at Carolina Country Club in Raleigh. Um, like I said, really having those skills and those uh, building blocks in your foundation. Um, although it was my last internship, I felt I had learned the most um, in my time there. Uh, you want to talk about a traditional old style, old Southern club. Uh, that, that club is the epitome of it. Um, one clubhouse, same location since its inception. Um, old traditions, you know, a, a five-year wait list to get in for membership. Um, it was really just trying to understand um, why there was room for innovation and room for change, uh, but you really had to base those off of um, their traditions that they expect every time they come to the club. Um, so that really made it uh, interesting. Uh, and re really, it was kind of the start of it being more of a progressive club um, and really adapting to that family need that a lot of clubs are adapting to still. Um, but that was one that was kind of almost on the forefront of it, um, right behind the Chevy Chase Club uh, that Zach was at, um, really was kind of focusing and gearing their entire club towards families uh, and then making it more of a, a family friendly environment. So I would say um, definitely uh, Carolina was uh, the biggest uh, experience for me that helped me develop where I am today. Awesome. Thanks, Brandon. Absolutely. All right. Um, and then we'll go to Nick for this one. Um, if I don't want a career in country clubs, um, how would CMA benefit me? So uh, we've, we've, touched on this a lot. Um, the networking on its own is, is immense. Um, you know, working in country clubs, uh, my, so my club here at Rolling Rock Club in particular, um, it's, it's not, it's not golf oriented, believe it or not. Um, we, we have trout fishing, game bird hunting, clay bird shooting, overnight rooms, dining, uh, tennis, swimming, hiking. Um, it's a vast array of, of different opportunities. And I think it was Brandon that mentioned it. There's clubs all over the country that aren't country clubs, uh, city clubs, racket clubs, um, university clubs, and you know it, it's a it, it can still be broad hospitality. Um, so I think, but the professionalism, uh, the education that you get from CMA, you know, it's just it's it's much beyond um, what you're going to learn in the classroom at, at Niagara University. Um, it carries over into a professional organization uh, beyond this, and. Um, you know, you can earn your certifications, um, you know, uh, uh, CCM, Certified Club Manager. Uh, it's something to kind of strive towards. And, and also, uh, it, it kind of keeps you on track. It keeps your goals within, uh, it keeps them attainable. Uh, you can really see your progress. And, um, it, you know, I, I, if you're not interested in golf, again, there's, there's, there's a vast uh, array of um, uh, opportunities within the country club world that uh, does not relate to golf. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thanks, Nick. 
Uh, Zach, do you have anything um, else to add that you may have not touched on? The three pillars of CMA are networking, professional development, and education. So I would say even if you are a member of CMA and you don't go forth and work through the club, you're going to get those things out of it. The education is definitely by far um, one of my favorite parts. I love going to the different conferences um, or to obtain the, the education credits not only, but to hear from different speakers and different club managers about things they're doing and new trends and just kind of anything relating to hospitality or club management specifically, but then also each kind of geographic location has their own chapter. So there's the New York State chapter, there's the Florida State chapter. So within those chapters, we have um, different educational sessions for the managers to attend locally. Um, and then some do different mini conferences as well. So down here in Florida, we do two summer conferences um, because a lot of the time managers can't go to the big world conference because that's in the peak of our season. Um, and I know back home in New York, we do the Great Lakes Conference um, with us in Ohio. Um, so it's pretty cool and neat, the, the education side of it. And I think that if you don't want to pursue maybe a, a job in a club per se, you're still going to get a lot of just general hospitality education out of being a part of CMA. Awesome, thanks, Uh Brandon, do you have anything else? Um, Nick and Zach really took a, a, a bunch of what I was going to say, um, but I really like, again, I just kind of em emphasize the, the building blocks and, and your foundation and the standards of clubs are, are extremely, extremely high. Uh, and if you can help to learn and start to learn and build your foundation from clubs that have extremely high standards, um, that, was, that will really carry over. Uh, to any of the facets of hospitality that, that's service-based um, that really will help you uh, start, you know, at a hotel and what the experience of, of a member has at a hotel and in a restaurant, um, there really is. So using, the, using CMA uh, to help, again, start your foundation is really, um, it, it's a great tool to have. Awesome. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah, if I could just jump in one more second there. Yeah, of course. I think one of the key things here that to recognize is that Jack and Brandon and myself, we didn't have any time to, to talk about this before. So the proof's really in the pudding when you hear um, kind of the same thing over and over. Um, it's, it's a legitimate, um, you know, uh, feeling that I think we all have that we've gained from CMA. Thank you. And then last question. Um, so feel free to start putting questions in the chat. Um, we'll get to those right after this final question. But we're going to end with um, what advice do you have for students that are interested in joining CMAA? Um, and Brandon, I'll let you go first so they don't, they don't steal your thunder this time. <laughs> um, I, from my perspective now, I wish I had joined CMA earlier. Um, I, I think that um, there's no skin off your back if you join and it's not for you. Uh, it's, it's one summer. You, you fortunately will have two additional summers in between your, your, the rest of your years at Niagara. Um, but I think if, you know, you're adventurous and you're willing to take the risk, the reward uh, is tenfold, uh, you know, during your, the rest of your years at Niagara, but also post-graduation uh, as, and some of your early management positions. Uh, so that's some of the, that's the advice I have. I just go for it. Um, you really, you have a great opportunity there. Awesome. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, Nick, any advice you have for um, prospective students? Yeah, so I think if you're interested in doing it, um, you know, put your best foot forward. Um, so we use a little bit of a saying here at Rolling Rock Club when we're, we're hiring our interns and we say, you know, you think about it from a classroom perspective. If you sit in the back of class and you just kind of doodle on your, your, your paper and you, you're half paying attention, maybe you're going to end up with a C. But if you sit in the front of the class and you're, you're paying attention and you go in after class and you talk to your professor, um, then you're going to get an A. And I think if, if you're going to join CMA, you're, it's to your benefit to put your absolute best foot forward um, because the monetary gain in the long run, uh, that's what, you know, hey, let's, let's not lie. That's what we're all in it for um, at the end of the day. Um, professional growth and, and um, education and um, a great paying job. That's what you want. And I think if you're interested in doing this, then yeah, put it, put it all out there. So there's, and like Brandon said, there's really no downfall. You spend uh, a year learning something. Awesome, thank you, Nick. 
Um, and then uh, Zach, we'll let you finish this one out. I would definitely say just don't be scared to go for it. I mean, like Brandon said, join as early as possible. I joined my first semester my freshman year and I have no regrets doing that. I mean, it got me to where I am now. So I'm so grateful for that. But also I would say get as involved as you can within the, the club itself, whether it's going to conferences when they, they hopefully return this upcoming year or if they do them virtually, um, I would still attend if I were you. I, I think you'll get just as much out of it as if we were in person. It might not be exactly the same, but you'll still learn something. Um, and even if that's running for an officer position or just kind of getting involved on campus and with the, the college as a whole in regards to CMAA, that would be my best advice for all of you. Awesome. Thank you, Zach. Um, do we have any questions out there? Um, if not, I'll make Trevor ask questions. Um, and we all want to know what he has to say. Um, but if um, any student um, has a question, feel free to say it or put it in the chat, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Not, uh, I would say, Trevor, do you have any questions you could start us off with? Oh man, you're gonna throw me on the spot like that. <laughs> um, I feel like I've already been on question duty before, but let's see here. Uh, <laughs> see, you didn't tell me this was something I'd have to do. That's um, the point, is I want you to be on your I feet. know. I Hey, you know what, I need it. Someone needs to keep me up awake and moving. Um, I, guess the, I guess something I kind of wanna retouch on is, and it, we kind of already answered it to an extent, but I think it's something that definitely could get dug into more is, if country clubs like is or private clubs in general, that's something you're not even thinking about. I mean, I that that's how I came in. I came in with the mindset of there's no way I'm in the country club business. There's no way that's something I'm doing. I changed my mind now, <laughs> but going into CMA, that's kind of where I was at. It, but if you were really mindset on hotels or your mindset on that kind of career and going into hotels or going into just restaurants, why is CMA going to benefit you? And I know we already touched on the leadership and stuff like that. But I think there's more of that fundamental, what are you going to get out of those internships that can kind of portray into more of that um, and more in that different field? Because those internships, they're with country clubs. It's, it's a whole different internship opportunity. But with that and with what CMA can provide in general, what is that different aspect you can get from those kind of things that can really go into hotels or into restaurants or into something like that? I know it's kind of a question we've asked before, but a little bit, a little bit different trying to broaden the spectrum. I'll, I'll jump in there, Trevor. Um, you know, I think... You know, if you're going to, let's just, let's say, let's say it's restaurants um, and you want to jump into, to, um, you know, leading a fine dining restaurant, you know, coming through a hospitality world of country clubs. And I, I kind of mentioned this, it, it, it meaning to be a superior product to what you can gain in the public, um, in a public setting. Um, I think just having that kind of a background um, and seeing it, seeing it differently is, is, it, is to a benefit, um, you know, you want to do everything to the best of your ability, and sometimes um, seeing it seeing it done differently can be a benefit to to how you execute at your your at your job. Um, so, you know, at my club we have overnight guest rooms, so we kind of operate as a hotel. We look at it as more of a home away from home for our members, um, but we have that side of it. And and again, you can you can get that kind of an opportunity um, in in any in any city. Um, across America. City clubs, um, very much like hotels, um, you know, very, very closely related. So um, again, I think if you, if you really look into it, uh, there's, there's a place for everybody. So, uh, and there's something to be learned, uh, whether you stay in clubs or you take it into hotels and restaurants. Awesome. Um, Zach or Brandon, if you have anything else you'd like to add, um, you're more than welcome to. Um, I haven't gotten any other questions yet. Um, so we'll to give another minute to see if anyone else has any questions. Oh, you know what? I'll ask another one so we don't have that dead awkward silence. Now. Perfect, Trevor. I, I hate that. So I'll <laughs> throw something out there for you guys. Um, so I know we're doing like the sales pitch of why, why, why you should join, why you should join, why you should join. Why did you join CMA? What brought, what, atta what attracted you to CMA? Because we didn't have in the past Zoom calls like this where people could just hop on and say, oh, here's everything about the club. What about the club kind of drew you in? What was that, what was that drive for you to join CMA? I'll, I'll start on that one. Um, the thing that really attracted me the most was it's, uh, you know, 
it's history of success. Uh, I, I'm someone that always likes to be successful and, and, you know, really does not accept failure very well at all. Um, so kind of seeing that path of success that so many students um, were preaching, uh, you know, you quote unquote, drink the Kool-Aid um, and you, you take one sip and you're, you're addicted and you're ready to go. Um, I, I, when I started at Niagara, I was keen on working at a hotel, was keen. The second I stepped foot on campus, I was going to work at a hotel. My first summer, I worked at the Country Club of Buffalo and, and really enjoyed it. Um, and then the following year, went to Lake Como. So I think you had two great examples of, you know, a great definition of a hotel and a great definition of a club. And really, you're, you, you really were able to understand and get that, those building blocks and, and understand where, which path you wanted to go for the rest of your time at Niagara. Um, but again, the, the path of success that, that, that CMA has. And the 100% is a, is a number no one can really argue with, uh, that when you were going to graduate after four years, you were going to be guaranteed a job and you were going to be guaranteed internships every summer in between. Um, you, you can't argue with it, especially in, in now with, with how the economy is and, and with the pandemic going on. And this is one industry that is still moving pretty quickly. Um, even with shutdowns, there's still services that we're working on in prevent in providing the members. So um, that's something that you you really don't see in some other facets, but you know, at CMA, it's, it's, they're still moving along pretty fast. Well, Aaron, we got a question. So I'm, I'm, I'm safe now. I don't have to ask anymore. All right. So um, the question is with the current pandemic still here, how long do you think it will take for the industry to bounce back? Anyone? I think that's a really tough question. I, I think from my perspective at Rolling Rock Club, we haven't been as, as drastically affected by this pandemic as other clubs. Um, I think Zach and Brandon can probably agree here. Uh, we're a non-for-profit uh, 501c7 organization, so we're not built on driving revenues and driving profits. We're built on satisfaction. And at least in the club world, I feel like we're not uh, we're not suffering because of this pandemic. We're actually, in many cases, in a better situation because we're able to really cater to our members um, and only our members with restricted numbers. Um, it's kind of it's kind of changed our model a little bit of allowing guests to come to the club and um, kind of being uh, you know the answer for everybody. And we're really just honing in on the membership at this point. So uh, I think really clubs aren't necessarily bouncing back. Brandon just said it. We're kind of still driving forward. Uh, our club right now, uh, north, northern, northeastern, um, or somewhere here in the northeast, we get really quiet at this time. Um, everybody goes down to see Zach in, in Florida. Um, so we're, we're kind of just, we're at the norm right now. Um, and I, I feel by the time May comes back around, uh, Memorial Day, that we're, we're just firing on all cylinders still. So again, I don't think that we, we have been hit that hard. We have some security blankets and you know, financial uh, uh, abilities that, that a lot of other places haven't had. So you know, security is a, a great thing, stability for sure. I think that each club is definitely in a, in a different position. We actually just shut down one of our restaurants yesterday, um, but that doesn't mean that the club might not shut down as a whole next week. So I think that it's kind of case by case, club by club, but also throughout this whole pandemic, we've been able to do so many great things. Um, we just were kind of recognized for being one of the top club innovators of 2020 for a lot of programming that we were able to do during um, the pandemic, I mean, lucky for us, unlike a lot of other clubs, we have a ton of outdoor space. So our outdoor dining is absolutely crazy. Um, in our grill room, which is kind of the heart and the hub of the club, um, still at, on an average night, we're doing upwards of two, 300 covers and that's with limited guests being at the club. Um, so we're still busy. Um, we were still able to host different events, um, minimum occupancies, but um, it, luckily enough that our board is, um, letting us do those things um, to the best of our ability while keeping our members safe. Um, a lot of the other clubs around us um, are operating very differently, very kind of reserved. Um, so it's kind of good and bad, I think, that we are kind of out there testing the water and 
trying to put our best foot forward, but we're still trying to provide that full membership experience for our members, even kind of with the current standing of what's going on. Yeah, and uh, kind of to piggyback off of what Nick and Zach said, there's there's really no way of knowing. Um, you know, the faster the vaccine gets out and in, into more people, the the quicker I think things will return to some sense of of normalcy. Um, I mean, we haven't had anybody in our dining room since before Thanksgiving. For those that are in Western New York and, and kind of understand what's going on here, so um, what once what is once our one of our busiest months we haven't had a single member in our clubhouse um so it's really an, an adjustment but we're just hoping that uh as soon as things start to warm up and we get more outside um capabilities that uh we'll be we'll be uh, like nick said ro rolling on all cylinders and and moving along and having a the busy 100 days war we call up here in, in western new york awesome thank you guys all for being here tonight with us um i know even me learning, hearing from our other alumni is really important. Um, the more people, it's who you know, not what you know. So that's probably the most important motto when it comes to the College of Hospitality, especially CMAA. Um, but if there aren't any other questions, I will um, let Zach, Brandon, and Nick um, head off to finish the rest of their night um, without screens, because I know that's kind of all it is these days. Um, but if you guys do have any other questions or would like to reach out to them, just um, get in touch with me and I can connect you with um, any of these three or anybody else, maybe a different club you're interested in. I can, I'll be able to find them for you. Um, yeah, I'd, like to, you know, I'd like thank to say, you, uh, yeah, I'd like to say thank you to the three gentlemen. Uh, oh, ladies, our prospective students. We happen to have six ladies as a prospective student. CMA is not the gentleman's club, even though our ha panel happened to be gentlemen. <laughs> All right, don't get a wrong idea. Uh, you know, it's just there are a lot of uh, you know female leaders and professionals in the CMA industry, right, gentlemen? So of course, yeah. We just happen to choose the 100%. best. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So if you have any doubt, you know, I just want to clear up a little bit. And I know <laughs> I worked with Brandon quite a bit with Rachel at Park Country Club. You know, they've been investing a lot of time and effort to help our students. Zach obviously reached out to us to put together summer virtual internship, which I, you know, it was so, you know, very creative and very generous of you to reach out. And I, I talked to, you know, communicated with the Nick late October, I believe, right? And uh, mm -hmm. with uh, uh, Stephanie Morris in our uh, career services. So we'll try to collaborate together. So, I mean, as these gentlemen mentioned, club industry is one of the, you know, because it's not based on random tourists. So a lot of the membership based, these members are limited to go abroad, make a trips. So they are actually spending more money within their club, within their communities. I think it has something to do with it, with the security. And, yeah, and I just want to say thank you guys so much for taking time out um, to do this To Really the students want to hear from you because you're the right. ones that are living it, experiencing it. And it's not like you graduated 20 plus years ago. I mean, look at the job opportunities that you have and you graduated just a few years ago, but you're also giving back each and every day. So thank you for making the time and for be, being able to reach out to the students and tell them your own personal experience. It really means so much to us and be safe and healthy and, and keep in touch. Well. Great, thank you so yeah. much guys. Um, we're gonna turn it over to um, Chris and Dr. Choi for the um, second portion of our call. But um, Brandon, Nick, Zach, thank you guys again. Um, we really appreciate you being with us. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everybody, it's a real pleasure. Take care. Take care. All right, I guess I have to say welcome back to most of you because I recognize Gabby, Katie, and who else? Molly, I think, yeah. Uh, you've been here, and then uh, Ms. Brescia and I introduced our college program. Katie has been in this virtual meeting, what, this is your fourth one, probably? <laughs> Something like that with hotels, and, uh, and this one, and uh, you visited as well. And the same goes with the Gabby and the Molly. I, I know C Colin, and Abby and Megan, uh, did any one of you attended open house, virtual open house by any chance? Particularly Abby, Megan, and Colleen? See, Megan visited last week um, on Friday, I believe. She, Trevor Two took her ago. out on tour. 
Oh. Yes. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Megan from the Baldwinsville. Think so. I think so. I don't know. I. I uh, yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so, again, my memory sometimes is not working properly. So, but yeah. So uh, thank you. Thanks for being here again. Um, I don't know, more than half of you already know a lot about our college, right? Uh, through our presentation, discussion, mm -hmm. what major we have, uh, things like that. Um, so and I, do you want me to go over like item by item? And uh, so that's the kind of a uh, kind of downside of the repeat visitors. <laughs> Uh, Colin and Abby probably didn't have a chance to to know about our college though, right? I don't recognize, uh, especially Abby. So um, let me see. Is there a... Erin, can I share my screen? Or? Uh, you should be able to. Okay, I don't see. Oh, wait, let me go to advanced sharing options. Oh. Yeah, maybe. Uh, oh, it says all participants can share. It does? Yes. Mm, I have my, where's my PowerPoint slide? I think I accidentally killed it. Here, I can um, start with something. I'll introduce myself since um, I probably right. should have done a, that at the beginning of the call. <laughs> um, and I'll let Chris introduce herself as well, because um, yeah. I know she may not have been on all the events that all of um, our students have been on. Um, but my name is Erin Clark. I work currently in the Office of Admissions. So I'm the one that helps create these events, talk to you if you have any questions. Um, I'm kind of like your little bridge between um, coming to Niagara and all of our alumni or staff, professors, current students. If you want to get in touch with anyone, you can talk to me. Um, I was a graduate of the College of Hospitality in 2018. I was tourism in destination management. I also had a major in Spanish and a minor in Latin American studies. Um, I was unfortunately not part of any of our um, hospitality clubs on campus, which is the one thing I wish I had done. Um, but I was a member of the track and field team. I was a walk on my freshman year. Um, I also did our Peru study abroad program um, back in 2016 just a few years ago, it was the best experience ever. Um, and I also worked on campus at Dwyer Arena, the ice hockey rink, um, which I did for about five years. And then every summer I had a different internship. So I did one at a private club in the Adirondacks. It was not a golf club either, which I guess I never thought about. Um, it was like an outdoors club, um, but it was a private club. It was very, it was different. It was not my thing, which is fine. Um, it's not for everyone. Um, I'm just not really into food and beverage management as much as some people are. Um, and I also did one um, on-campus planning events um, during the summer with our um, Center for Conference and Events. And then my Peru program was another one. Um, so there's lots of different options. We have career fairs um, at, towards like the summer, like in the spring to help you find jobs or internships for that summer, whether it's full-time, part-time, internships, whatever you're looking for. Um, but CMA gives you that extra edge um, and there's even more options through that. All right, Dr. Choi, did you get your uh, PowerPoint set up? or I'll let Chris introduce herself real quick. I think he's muted. Chris, go ahead. So thank you all for being here. I'm Christina Bradshaw, assistant to the Dean in the College of Hospitality and Tourism Management. And I have been at Niagara now, this is my 17th year. And um, I basically work with students on curriculum, adding minors, adding their concentrations, especially with CMAA. Um, I've been fortunate to chaperone the students on a couple of the trips this past uh, school year. Um, the previous fall, I did um, the trip to Cleveland, and we actually um, got to meet up with four alumni that were working in the area there, and students that um, got so close with other current students that the club manager came out and asked if any of our current students were also interested in additional internships. So the summer months um, are extremely busy for them, so we're hoping that this next summer, everything will start to flourish up again for the clubs. And I like being able to reach out to the students to see where they're working, but also our alumni to help assist them with each and every one of those positions. I also did the New York um, 
Niatric and New York City and Westchester County, where we got a chance to meet up with club managers and again, um, students working all different positions. And the great part of these trips when students actually join is that they're, they're meeting students from all areas. So they're meeting students that are sometimes double concentrating, sometimes um, managing and um, managing both hotels, resorts, uh, tourism, and also adding to their curriculum. So when these students actually go to interview with these country clubs, they're set apart from students from all different colleges. And the amazing part about this is that they're interviewing with students that might be um, graduating from CIA or Penn State and Michigan State. And our students now that they, because they've won 11 years in a row, they stand out above and beyond them. And the professionalism and the networking opportunity, I always say to students, it's not about who you know, it's about who knows you. So I mimic that with Aaron as well. And um, I say to students, don't be afraid to come to us and start working at that first internship to build up your resume the first summer you're with us because it only helps you decide where you want to go, where you want to be, and to really uh, see yourself starting to network, but to see where you may want to work is our goal, our, to help you be comfortable and feel that you're working in the job that you set out for. And thank you all for being here tonight with us. Yeah, and we had a, um, a quick question. I know Dr. Troy is getting ready to share. Um, Chris, would you be able to touch on um, our HTA club at all? Um, I know we talked about CMA tonight, but um, I know HTA is another big one for sure. our college. So students with the Hospitality Tourism Association, it's actually the biggest club on campus. They um, do community service hours and students are required to do five hours each semester. And those students actually, the, the trips that they plan are completely student run. So students are getting a chance again to network with other uh, alumni, but um, with each and every one of these trips that they do do, um, they're meeting up with resorts, hotels. Um, again, I was with the students when we went to Cleveland and we got a chance to do a behind the scenes um, trip where we were actually at the convention center and we got a chance to meet with the club man, the, the director, the manager, and get a chance to see all facets uh, of the property. So the students are actually really getting a chance to see, well, well what other, the other positions are there within hotel, resorts, restaurants, and facilities? Because the gamut is learning all areas. So when you learn how to manage, you're getting a chance to work in every area. And these students, because it's a club, Again, they can join as a freshman, they're networking, um, they get a chance to order apparel, and they're traveling literally to different places every semester. So in the past, um, we have, they've done Boston, they have gone to Cleveland, they've done New York City that we do with our hotel show, but being part of the Hospitality Tourism Management Association is really a club that you can add to your resume, but it also sets you apart from other students because you're getting involved. And because it is student run, the students actually plan the fundraising for it. They, they can plan trips for as little as a couple hundred dollars and go away for a weekend. And they're getting a chance to really mentor with current students in the program. Awesome, thanks, Chris. Sure. All right, Dr. Troy, if you'd like to take it away. So Dr. Troy, you're muted again. There you go. Now it's working, right? Yes. Going back and forth. And uh, um, so um, again, uh, everybody introduced themselves and I guess it's my turn. Uh, my name is Young Soo Choi. I'm the interim dean at the college. Uh, I've been with the Niagara for past seven and a half years. Uh, before that, I was a professor at the University of Central Florida. Uh, Zach Racchio is one of our alumni working in uh, Mirasol Country Club. Uh, is working with one of my former colleague, uh, Dr. Felstool. As I said, that program has 3,300 hospitality major students, bigger than Niagara University itself. And I was shocked that they only have less than 10 CMAA chapter students. I don't know what they do, to be honest with, with you. Um, so um, I, I hope you learned a lot from uh, our alumni and our students about the Club Management Association of America. The, the immense and high impact opportunities this particular arrangement can bring you once you join our program. 
Uh, and I think the question was very legit about the pandemic. Uh, as, I, as they mentioned, as I attest to, uh, club management is probably one of the uh, more stable uh, industry because of the nature of the business. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, I know we've been struggling for the past several months. And uh, obviously hotel, restaurant and sports in certain degree has been hit uh, because of pandemic, because of new thing and vaccines has been developing. And then uh, we're seeing like a light at the end of the tunnel, hope, hopefully in, in a few months. And uh, people will go back to a uh, certain level of the leisure activities, travel, and, and uh, also hotel stays and eating out. Um, so um, I know some of you may have uh, some concern about job stabilities. And if I join, what's going to happen four years later, three plus years later? And another side of that is, you know, people will not stop traveling, will not dine out, will not enjoy games. Uh, it's going to be there, maybe a little bit of a, a different you know, arrangement and different changes, but it will be there. We're all human beings. And when they need uh, someone, uh, someone like you, future professionals, you're going to be one of the highly sought after you know, assets in this very dynamic and exciting industry. So um, just want to give you, you know, a little bit of a peace in your mind. Um, I know several, three, at least three, four of you already been here and then, you know, our college a little bit, but uh, a few of you have never had a chance to have a discussion with me and Ms. Brasho about our college. We have, a, as you may know, uh, many of you already applied and get accepted. I think one students are still working on the application. We have hotel restaurant management and sport management and tourism recreation management. Uh, today, I think all of you are interested in you know, hotel and restaurant management. Uh, obviously, CMAA is one of the unique setup for that. Uh, we are the smallest college in our university. Uh, Niagara itself is very small, but we are the smallest college. We have about 230 uh, undergraduate students. And we have several full-time faculty. We have uh, really top executives in the different industries, the, the you know, CEOs and president of the Buffalo you know, YMCA's, uh, general manager of the top hotels, uh, and the top executive of the sports organizations like Bison's. Um, they are our part-time faculty. So we are providing really, really top quality management education from the full-time faculty and excellent part-time faculty. Um, as I told you, I worked in a bigger programs. Uh, before UCF, I was an instructor at Penn State. Uh, I know Mr. Mr. Nick Crawford is working in Pennsylvania. Uh, I was a, a little bit surprised. Uh, the place he works, uh, that's very close to a place called La Trobe. Uh, that's where the Arnold Palmer was born. You know, the, the king, the golfer. So I was surprised that uh, Rolling Rock is not really about golf. <laughs> Uh, knowing that Arnold Palmer was born and raised in that area. <laughs> but anyway, um, so we have a, you know, a lot of the connections, uh, alumni network, not only the CMA alumni, all the hotels, uh, tourism destination marketing organizations, restaurant tours, sport organization leaders and professionals. They all come back every fall and we just had a nice virtual alumni uh, event where they want to have a one-to-one -one relationship with our students to help them with securing summer opportunities or providing professional guidance and advice for their you know, future career. So I think those are the very, very unique set. I think I mentioned to some of you already, uh, I really wanna emphasize again, things I haven't seen at the big programs like Penn State or University of Central Florida. And I've, I've lived through it. I worked there, worked here for the last seven plus years. And this is going to be a deal breaker, in my opinion. And I know many of my former students at UCF is not in a good place at this moment. And I know that in person because I still communicate with them. They, I'm, I'm one of the culprit, to be honest with you. I was a professor there seven years, never had a one-to-one -one relationship with my student, former student of mine, which was about 1,400. For seven years, I worked there. So I can only blame myself, but I just couldn't do it because I just don't have enough time or energy to help 
individual students. So I, I, and it's kind of heartbreaking, heartbreaking to me when, when I communicate with former student of mine from those institutions. I'm still working in you know, one of the local Chinese restaurants or hotels, the front, front desk. They graduated seven, eight years ago. They're still working front line because they never had structured advice or professional guidance. They just took the job here and there, getting paid. And then we just check, check, check and graduate. So, um, and I can, I can assure you that we are not doing it. You know, I, I wanted to go back to Korea as some of you know, but I gave, you know, last chance to with the NU uh, and then I, I've been very blessed to be associated with the NU program. And, um, you know, I think that's the, that's the beauty of having a very small program and every faculty and step like Ms. Brashow, such a dedicated staff members and professors try to help each one of you uh, be as best as you can be. So, and alumni and industry partners are a crucial part of that as well. So these are the, some of the examples. Um, we are management programs, but these are some of the programs we had until last year. And many programs we kind of put a hold because of hotel convention in New York, restaurant show in uh, Chicago in May, and uh, Niagara Power Baseball, we are the only one owned and operate, student operated uh, collegiate summer baseball team. Uh, we won the championship in, in second season. Uh, that last past summer should be a third one, but we weren't able to do it because of the COVID. But with a very cautious, optimistic uh, viewpoint, I think we'll uh, bring back the team again. Um, used to bring our students to spring you know, Major League Baseball spring training in Florida in uh, Jupiter and West Palm. And we used to bring our students to Super Bowl for functions. And uh, academically and work related, we have a Lake Como program. Uh, it's a summer long program, 11 week program, 12 credit bearing. You are full time students. So you are actually a full time student in the summer. And you get tons of work experience, getting a lot of hours under your belt in luxury hotel in Northern Italy, one of the most luxurious resort town in Italy. And Ms. Brescia actually. Uh, chaperone our students a couple of years ago. And uh, Peru has a, uh, we have a partner in Peru, in uh, Lima and Cusco, where Aaron uh, went there, I don't know whether three years ago, four years ago. Uh, it's a cultural immersion program. And we have a partner, you took the Peruvian cuisine class and history, and uh, you took some classes. You actually participate in some of the uh, kind of community service, mini community services with the uh, elementary schools or uh, foster homes and uh, abuse to student, student shelters, which really, really uh, kind of put, give you a different perspectives and things you took it for granted living in the United States, uh, that those are the luxury goods that these, two, these kids never had, a, never even dreamed to uh, enjoy. And uh, you also uh, do a little bit of mini internship with a boutique hotel. So these two programs are probably one of the most unique programs I've ever seen uh, in my entire 17 years of teaching at the higher education. And I strongly recommend you, I mean, once you join in next fall or later, I think once you become the sophomore, I think that these programs will go back to normal stage and will uh, bring our students to either Lake Como or Pearl, or you can pursue a dual degree program with our partner in, in Germany, three years here, one year in, in Bad Honef in Germany, and you got two degree from here in Europe with only one tuition, by the way, not separate tuitions. So these are some of the examples, uh, the experiential learning opportunities. So our education happens half in class, half uh, outside of class, I guess. Uh, I mean, student organization, we already talked about it. Uh, Trevor Howell, he is also a member of Sport Management Association because he has a kind of double major, right? So, um, I mean, even though you're a hospitality major, you can still join Sport Management Association and see, you know, what it's like to be in a, in a sport industry. Uh, again, we only have three majors uh, and these industries and these my, uh, majors are highly intertwined. And then that's the whole goal. In my opinion, that should be your goal, even though you are applying for hotel uh, 
the restaurant management at this moment, try to take a few classes in other majors, other disciplines, and think about minor, right? Uh, Ms. Cra Ms. Brasher always emphasized importance of minors, right? Communications and human resources, marketing, and American Sign Languages, right? Uh, foreign languages like uh, Aaron, right? Uh, being a dual, dual you know, uh, language proficiency is a really important thing in our service industry. And we also have an honor society, uh, Eta Sigma Delta. Every year, handful of our uh, top students being you know, uh, recognized uh, as uh, honor society members. So, I mean, it's a kind of brief overview of our college, okay? Uh, but I always try to compare my personal experience as a professor in a big institutions which comes with you know nice things they can offer. They have nice sports programs, and so many professors. Uh, nice, beautiful facilities and campus. And um, but that's pretty much it, based on my experience. And you just float around and you survive. <laughs> you graduate, and you fully look for your job by yourself. Unfortunately, you don't have any alumni mentor. Or, or, or a dedicated staff like Ms. Brashow or faculty like us, or even our former students like Aaron. And she would be a great you know, asset for you to help to get connected with the industry. So, uh, I mean, you may think about big programs, maybe New York State in, uh, SUNY system or us, maybe out of, inst uh, out of state institutions. I always mention to our students, take a look at those institutions, you know, take a very close look look what they can give you uh, and compare and make the right choice for you, uh, you know, depending on what you want to do. Uh, and if you choose our program and you got my word and you got Ms. Brasho and our students uh, word that we will invest every time and effort to help you to be the, the best professional in our industry. And uh, I think these testimonials from our alumni and our former graduates, I think it should be a good, good enough evidence. Uh, so th these are the contact information. I think Ms. Brasher, that's your email and the phone number. Um, so uh, you can always reach out to us on the January. Our spring semester starts January 28th, a week, a little bit later than usual because of the COVID, uh, but I think we are ready to host another successful semester. And most of you are probably finishing your high schools. Um, based on what I heard, I think most of you are high school seniors at this moment uh, or junior. Uh, so wish you the very best for your last semester. And uh, in the meantime, uh, especially if you're living very you know, nearby, uh, contact with uh, Ms. Brasho or me um, we strongly recommend you to pay a visit if you haven't done yet. We're still hosting uh, individual visits and uh, I'm teaching an in-person class in spring. So you may sit in my class or other faculty's class and see what it's like to be in NU or College of Hospitality and Tourism Management classroom setting. I think that's very, very important for you to experience uh, before you make the final decision. I hope you make the decision earlier, but if that's what it takes, let us know as soon as possible. Thank you. Yeah, so hopefully we'll get a chance to see you on campus. And if you have any questions at all, feel free. I wanna just reiterate, feel free to reach out to us. We don't wanna let any question go unanswered. So that's what we're mm -hmm. here for, whether it's an AP question, a scholarship question, um, you know, getting on campus to come and visit us. Feel free to reach out and we'll make sure to get in touch with you, but also to let you see what you know, what the campus is like, the environment, and even though students are social distancing and still on campus, we're doing a great job with bringing everyone back together in a few weeks. Right. I mean, one thing I, I forgot to mention, and I mean, some of you already know, uh, we actually have a certain designated scholarship money uh, for students uh, to take advantage of these variety of the experiential learning opportunities. Okay. Anything related to uh, club trip, travel, or study abroad, or any kind of you know, work abroad, uh, we have certain money earmarked to cover some, some portion of your, your expenses so that we can 
provide a um, you know, significant amount of the uh, financial support. The other yeah. thing I want to mention is um, the Murani Scholarship. So I exactly. probably have reached out to some of you on um, the application deadline is at the end of the month. Um, if you have any questions about it, I helped create the qualifications and stuff. So you can reach out to me if you have any questions about the essays. Um, you could probably use your letters of recommendation that you use for your application um, if they meet the qualifications on what we're looking for. But it's a really great opportunity. Um, it guarantees you internships um, mm -hmm. outside yeah. of just what CMA could offer you. I'm sorry, my cat's in the call now. <laughs> <laughs> but the Marani Scholarship is a really great opportunity. It's not that difficult to apply and we haven't really had any many applications yet. So you'll have a good chance of hopefully getting scholarship money. Is that a second one? <laughs> no, it's the same one. <laughs> <laughs> How did... <laughs> She's walking around, I'm at the table. Oh, I thought there was a mountain lion. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh. oh, gosh. All right. Do you guys have any other questions? Sorry, if I keep moving here, she'll just come back. Yeah. Well, I just yep. want to say thank you again to everyone. Stay safe and feel free to reach out with any questions that you may have. So great seeing all of you guys here. And if you need to, um, you know, reach out to us soon. Come visit, visit us on campus and take a tour. We'd love to have you sit in on a class and maybe you can powwow around with Trevor, Trevor around campus as well. 